Hi there, welcome back to my complete rereading of the New Mutants. This time I will be talking about New Mutants issue number 11 titled Magma. It came out September 27th, 1983, and all the same people who worked on issue 10 worked on this issue as well. Sorry it's been a minute since I made a Mutants video. I was working on building a recording area and some other types of videos, as well as writing and editing for my Camp Nano goals which I didn't accomplish, but I still did write a little bit, so that's good. But never mind all that. If you are ready, let's get into this. The Plot The opening of this issue is a shot of Magma and Selene fighting. Magma is yelling to Selene that she tried to kill her, but instead, she was remade to be one with the Earth. She tells Selene that she will stop her evil reign and her sacrifices of innocence to her fire cult. Selene tells her that that will remain to be seen. Amara as Magma is firing molten fire at Selene and Selene is blocking it with magic. Selene tells Amara that even though she appears to have the ability to control fire, she, Selene, has the ability to bring inanimate objects to life. And with that, Selene causes the rocks around Magma to turn into living warriors who begin to fight Amara. Selene says that no matter how much power Amara has, Selene has more experience and will win. Danny calls out Amara as the stone giants seemingly crush her. Danny notices that whatever happened to Amara that caused her to transform was a surprise to everyone, even Selene. When she looks at Selene, she says, Selene, by the ancestors, your face. We are shown that Celine's face looks old and weathered. She explains that each victory she has has a cost, and this one is more costly than most. But she explains that fortunately her condition is easily rectified, but that unfortunately will mean the sacrifices of all the people in her fire cult. The rocks begin to burst out of the walls, and the people standing around who have been watching the sacrifices, the members of Celine's fire cult, are all hit by them. The people beg and plead to be spared, but they are all knocked into the sacrificial fire pit. Celine says each moment of their torment, each death, restores her youth and vigor. She tells Danny to try and feel it, and asks her if it's not wonderful and pleasurable. Danny indeed begins to feel it as well, the pleasant feelings from the people's death. She tries to ignore it and fight against it, but soon she has a sort of ecstasy. Celine tells Danny that they are linked now through blood, and this is a bond Danny will never be able to break. She explains that she will do the same with the other mutants as well, and they will go over the earth, making it their own. Danny manages to break free of the thrall for a moment, and she says she is no one else's slave, and Selene wonders why she still defies her, and Danny tells her maybe she isn't as tough as she thinks. Selene tells her that this is no matter, and she will prevail over Danny in the end. Danny tells her they have bigger problems and that the pool of lava below them is exploding. Just then, Amara comes out of the pit of lava again. She tells Selene she has failed because in her haste to destroy her, Selene did not realize that she could burn straight through the stones like lava. She asks if Selene is able to do the same and pours a bunch of rock and magma over Selene. Danny wonders where she can go. She says that Amara has nearly made the cave too hot to stand. She notes that all she can do is climb higher on the slope she is on, but soon she loses her grip and falls down. She is laying down on the ground when Amara in her magma form stands before her. Amara asks Danny, and Danny says, Great spirit, have mercy, then says, Hi Amara, how are you doing? Danny's powers begin to latch onto Amara's mind, and she projects Amara's greatest fear at that moment, and it's an image of Amara burning Danny alive. Amara is very upset and cries out that she doesn't want to do this, and Danny is her friend. Danny realizes Amara is very worried about killing her. Danny thinks that Amara is afraid of her own powers going out of control. She thinks this is how she felt when she first manifested her mutant powers. She wonders if Amara is a mutant like her. Danny tells Amara she understands what she is going through and that she is not alone, to which Amara says, Look at me. I'm a monster. She wonders how she can face her father or ever have a normal life and says it might be better if she dies. At that moment, she is blasted by a bolt of power. She screams as it encircles her. We see that it is once again Selene hurting her. Selene says she might as well grant Amara her wish and put her out of her misery. She then drains all of Amara's life force. Amara falls over, seemingly dead. Danny is horrified and yells to Selene that she killed Amara. Selene says she drained everything from Amara and rarely has she tasted anything so sweet. 
She tells Danny that in time, Danny will do this as well, and she will enjoy it just as much as Celine does. Back at the Aquila mansion, all of Aquila's defeated soldiers are led away by Gallio's men, and the new mutants sans Danny are seemingly victorious with Gallio. Gallio thanks the mutants for their help and tells them they have stopped a civil war from happening. Sam wonders why he feels so lousy. It's at this point, Bobby tells Gallio that they are worried about Danny and that she has been missing all night. Gallio tells one of his centurions to form a task force to look all over and find Danny wherever she might be. Rain offers to help in her wolf form. She can track really well. But Gallio thinks that the last thing he wants is for Danny to be found. He tells Rain that she is considered a goddess in Nova Roma and she should leave finding Danny to him. Aquila screams to Rain that she can't trust Gallio and that he is lying, and Gallio is the actual traitor to New Rome. Gallio tells everyone not to listen to Aquila and that his rants are coming from a sick, depraved mind. Aquila screams he has proof and Gallio calls for him to be silenced and a guard holding Aquila strikes him. At this moment, Bobby sees prisoners being led somewhere and one of them has the same color red hair as his mother. He asks Sam to cover for him and Sam asks where he's going and Bobby says he will tell him later. Bobby also tells Sam to take care of Rain and himself because he thinks Sam's suspicions about Gallio might be right. Sam says, gotcha, and good luck to Bobby. Bobby knows that he has to get a centurion outfit to sneak around in and he happens to find a lone soldier. He smacks him on the head and takes his armor. Bobby is frustrated that the guy he knocked out is much bigger than him and he hopes hiding in the shadows under the man's cloak will hide the fact that the armor doesn't fit him very well. Bobby tells himself that he thought his mom was dead until he saw the red-haired woman in the street. He also thinks to himself that the new mutants are in a real mess because both Aquila and Gallio are claiming that they are the good guys. He thinks to himself that Gallio has always been friendly and acted as a protector to the mutants. He thinks about how Sam never really trusted Gallio and Rain says it's because Sam is attracted to Aquila's daughter, Amara. Bobby knows that Rain is jealous and wonders if Sam knows how Rain truly feels about him. But earlier in the evening, an assassin, Castro, tried to kill them. He claimed he was working for Aquila, but Bobby thinks about how convenient it is that Gallio now had a reason to take out his chief political rival. He thinks it's weird that Gallio seemingly has an army ready to go take out Aquila, but just then he hears voices in a jail cell. He recognizes both of them. He hears one voice say, You lie, Castro. You are not in my husband's employ. We are shown that it is Bobby's mom, Nina, talking to Castro. Castro explains that technically he works for the Hellfire Club and he's going to help Gallio become emperor and Gallio in turn will give Emmanuel da Costa permission to mine the land. He tells her that Emmanuel loves her and would never order her death but that this is a lonely and dangerous country and accidents happen. He explains it's a shame that she won't be around to see her husband's success. A soldier in silhouette in the doorway says, Castro. Castro yells for the soldier to go away and that he has been promised privacy by the soldier's master, Senator Gallio. At that moment, Bobby turns into a sunspot form and bursts out of the armor to Castro's surprise. And he yells, what if I say different? Then he goes towards Castro and knocks him to the ground. Nina is so happy to see him and she says that she feared she would never see him again and he says he thought the same of her. The two embrace and are so glad to be together again. Bobby asks how she escaped drowning and Nina explains that she was saved by the Amazon women and that the Amazon women and girls had escaped Nova Roma to get away from the Black Priestess. Nina tells Bobby that the cult of the Black Priestess is very old and they do terrible sacrifices of humans in demonic rites. Bobby tells his mother that Danny had left on a reconnaissance mission hours before and had not returned. And also, Rain had not sensed her with their Psylink either. Nina says that if Danny is captured by the cult, she is in great danger. Bobby says Gallio never mentioned the cult, that he might even be a member. He thinks Gallio might be glad to have Danny out of the way and that he had won. Bobby realizes Gallio doesn't really need any of them anymore except for Rain. He asks his mother if she can somehow contact the Amazon women. How she would do this, I don't really know, but okay. She says she might be able to, but why? Bobby tells her that if they link up Aquila's men and the Amazon, plus the powers of the new mutants, they might be able to throw a monkey wrench into Gallio's plans. Nina asks about Danielle, and Bobby says that he wishes he could help her, but she is strong and probably can take care of herself. Okay, Bobby. <laughs> Danny is resilient, maybe even more than Nina is. 
He goes on to say he wishes it was daylight because his mutant power is derived from the sun. He tells her that he doesn't know how much power he has left and once it's gone, that's it until daybreak. He asks his mother if it's true his father was glad. I'm not really sure what he means by this. I guess, is he glad that the two of them are gone? I don't know because it she didn't really say anything about him being glad, neither did Castro, but whatever. Nina tells him his father has ambitions. Bobby presses her again and again if it's true, and finally she admits, yes, it is. Elsewhere in Galio's home, the new mutants are beginning to share Bobby's feelings of betrayal. The people of Galio are celebrating and eating fruit while Aquila is whipped over and over again. Sam thinks that it's sort of gross that Galio is doing this, and even if Aquila was the worst person, he didn't deserve all that. Rain also feels upset. She sees that Sam is angry and assumes it's probably because of her. She is also disgusted that Galio is getting enjoyment from torturing Senator Aquila. The soldiers ask Galio what the orders are in Latin, and Galio re replies in Latin that the boy has served his purpose and to kill him by poisoning his wine, drug Rain's drink. Galio sees Sam is not too happy and tells him to cheer up because tonight is a night to celebrate. Sam says he is sorry and he is just worried about Danny. Galio thinks to himself that he knows Sam is becoming suspicious of him. Rain and Sam are served drinks and gold chalices. Galio stands and says she will turn up, I'm sure, and dedicates his next drink to Danny and tells Rain and Sam to drink deeply. I don't know why he didn't ask where Bobby was, but I guess Sam made up an excuse. At that exact moment, Amara in her magma form bursts through the floor, screaming for her father. Galio yells, by the blessed gods. Aquila looks scared and says to himself, that voice. Merciful Hera, it cannot be. Amara? Amara looks very upset and begs her father that if he loves her, he will save her as she reaches out a fiery arm to him. Galio screams to his guards that Aquila's daughter has changed into a demon and orders to have them both killed. Aquila tells his daughter to run away and leave him to his fate. She tells him that she can't and she is too weak to even protect him. But at that moment, Bobby swings in on a rope and tells Amara not to worry and that the new mutants take care of their friends. He wonders what in the world happened to her. Bobby swings into the guards, knocking them to the ground. One of the other soldiers screams to Galio that Aquila's legionnaires and the Amazon women are both attacking them as well. We see the soldiers of Aquila and the Amazon women rushing towards them, led by Nina. Bobby asks Rain and Sam if they are going to help out. Sam asks if the woman leading the charge is indeed Nina, and Bobby says that it was her and she was alive and well, and that Sam was right all along and they had been helping the wrong side, and now it was time to make amends. Sam and Rain begin to help in the fray. Rain is furious and so upset that she misjudged the situation so badly that she turns into a full wolf and valiantly protects both Senator Aquila and his daughter Amara with her own life. Sam sees reinforcements for Galio's side rushing towards them, and they are all in a narrow hallway, which is perfect for him. He cannonballs right through the group, defeating all of them easily with his mutant blasting power. A soldier runs towards Bobby with a spear, telling him he will gut him. Bobby says somehow he doesn't think so. Using his sunspot powers, he throws the man off of him. He thinks that it was unwise of him to transform because he doesn't know how much power he has left, and he should have used his judo training as well. I guess he knows judo, I don't know if that's been mentioned before. He then realizes that the shoulder he was shot through hurts a lot and wonders if he opened the wound. He is kneeling in pain as a soldier sneaks up right behind him with a blade. Thankfully, Cannibal runs into the would-be attacker and Cannibal yells to Sunspot to watch his back. Sunspot thanks him and Cannibal reminds him they are buddies and asks him who keeps score anyways. Sunspot tells Cannibal that his mother told him that much of the general army of Nova Roma is staying neutral in the fight of Gallio versus Aquila, and if they beat Gallio's housemen, they probably will have no further trouble. Cannonball yells past Sunspot, Rain, look out! We see Wolvesbane easily take out a foe Cannonball thought she had not seen because she was protecting the Aquilas, and Amara was no longer in her magma form and appeared to be knocked out. And as she does so, she says that she may be small and not smart or pretty, but that she is more than able to take care of herself. But just as Wolfsbane is finished with the foe, she is struck over the head. See, Rain really is getting bonked on the head all the time. I'm beginning to wonder if this was like a private joke within the writers or something. Galio yells over the unconscious Amara and Wolfsbane that he has worked too hard to be foiled by children, 
and once the Outlanders are killed, they can also end Aquila's rabble. But then his hand is hit by a sword and someone asks him, and what pray tell of Aquila himself? We see Aquila and Gallio facing off with swords. Aquila taunts Gallio that he has often talked about killing Aquila and that this is his big chance to do so. Gallio tells him, before I'm done, Aquila, you will beg for mercy. Aquila says back, talk is easy, traitor, just like killing children. The two begin to spar with their swords. Sunspot yells out to Aquila, but Aquila tells him to look after the girls and that Gallio is to be his. We see the two continue to fight. We are told the two men are the same age, but that Gallio is taller and presumably faster and stronger, and Aquila is hurt and has been tortured. The duel seems like it will be no contest, but it turns out that there was a contest, and Aquila runs Gallio straight through the stomach with his blade. Gallio falls to the floor, and Aquila tells him that his problem was always seeing things the way he thought they were. He never thought someone old and fat like Aquila could take him down, but that he was a fool, and I'm assuming Gallio dies here. Bye, bitch. Senator Aquila asks how Amara is doing. Sam is covering a now nude Amara with a blanket because her clothes all burned away when she became magma. Amara says she was dying and that Selene drained her whole life away, but somehow touching the earth revived her. She tells everyone that Selene is a psychic vampire and she has Danny and plans to also make Danny into a vampire like her. Sam says Galio's wife, it figures, and Bobby says that the tunnel Amara created when she burned her way into the home as Magma must lead back to where Selene is and asks Rain if she can track Danny through the tunnel. Rain says she will track her to the gates of hell if she has to. Soon the mutants are heading through the caves. Sam tells them this is like being in the mines in Kentucky and that these tunnels are definitely man-made. Amara says they must have been made by Selene because she has the ability to make rocks come to life. Bobby asks Amara if Selene can do anything else and Amara says she doesn't know and that is all she saw. Bobby worries that if Selene is as powerful as Amara says, that they will not have any advantages. He wonders if Amara is a mutant and what her powers can do. Rain bounds off and Bobby tells her not to go so fast, and a wall snaps shut between Rain and the other mutants. Bobby thinks Selene must be trying to deal with them one at a time. Bobby tells Sam to smash through the wall, but as he says this, living rocks grab at the mutants' feet, begin to grow and envelop them. Sam yells about the tentacles made out of rock. Amara says this is Selene's doing, and Bobby says he must escape before they, and he is buried alive before he can even finish his sentence. But this doesn't last long. Cannonball blasts his way out of the rock, and Magma Amara melts the rock around her. Amara is thinking she is almost as afraid of her mutant power as she is of dying. She looks at the melted stone and fears what it could do to a human body. Cannonball notices how scared Magma looks, and feels pity for her. He hopes that he is invulnerable from fire when blasting like he is from physical force because then he comes and picks Magma up still in her fire form. Thankfully, he is invulnerable to her fire. Cannibal, while carrying Magma, crashes through the rock encasing Bobby, freeing him as well. Bobby explains he tried to turn into a sunspot form and says he must be out of power. Cannonball tells him this is okay and he can sit back and let everybody else fight to which Bobby says, no way, he wants to help out his friends. Amara tells them both to look as they boss through the air. Down below is Danny tied to some sort of stone edifice, and Selene is telling her not to get excited because the others have not come to rescue her but to their own doom. Selene has made a wolf form from rock and Rain is fighting it. Amara tells Rain to let her deal with the rock wolf and she uses her powers to easily defeat it. Danny yells to Amara. Selene knows that Amara is actually somehow still alive and that it will be delicious to feast on her again. Wolfsbane lunges forward, still in her wolf form, teeth bared. Magma or Amara screams for Wolfsbane to go get her. Sam yells at Magma not to encourage Wolfsbane, and this is not their way. They are not killers. Selene blasts all the mutants with some sort of energy beam and asks them if Magma learned nothing from their first encounter that she cannot be killed by mortal means. Danny begs Celine to stop and says she will become her slave willingly and do anything if Celine spares her friends. Celine tells her she is coming from a place of absolute weakness and asks why she should or even would make a deal with Danny when she will soon have all the mutants. At this moment, Sunspot comes up behind Celine and tells Danny not to bother making deals with Celine and not to give her the satisfaction. 
Selene bursts Sunspot and asks if the sleep of death was too easy and wonders if he would rather be torn limb from limb. Sunspot tells her to do her worst and he will defy her to his last breath. Selene asks, oh really? Danny thinks it was really dumb of Sunspot to make Selene matter, but then realizes the momentary distraction Sunspot has caused might have weakened Selene enough that Selene's defenses to Danny's powers might be lower. She attempts to use her power and sure enough there is a hole in Selene's defense. Selene is met with a vision of her true death and she is terrified. This gives Sunspot, who is now human again, enough time to stab Selene through the heart, but it does not kill her, and Selene tells him that she will not die. Bobby had noticed that there was a hole in the ceiling of the cave, and he thinks it must be daylight again. Selene begins to drain Sunspot's life force, and Sunspot calls to Cannonball to blast through the ceiling of the cave. Cannonball manages to blast a hole in the cave, and it is indeed morning, and the sun is shining very brightly. He tells Sunspot he's in business. Sunspot changes back into his Sunspot form, and he notices that his transformation seemingly overloaded Selene for a moment. Somehow he knows the power was too much for her. Sunspot wishes he was at full power and didn't merely look impressive. He tells Magma to burn a hole through the earth as deep as she can. Magma feels the lava and the stone, and she simultaneously is scared and exhilarated. Bobby lifts the shocked Selene over his head and yells, Farewell, demoness, and he holds her over the hole Magma has made. Danny screams for Sam to stop him, and Wolfsbane and Danny and Cannonball look at Sunspot in horror. Sunspot tosses Selene into the fiery liquid and screams, Too late. He says he will cast her into her tomb, then punches the earth while saying, And then I will seal it behind her. You killed her, Sam says to Bobby. Bobby tells Sam it was no less than she deserved. Sam says this isn't the point and that they're supposed to be better than this. Bobby says this is an easy rule for Xavier to follow when he is safe in New York. He goes on to say he's afraid he merely slowed Selene down for a while because he doesn't think any of them know a way to truly kill her. He hopes that he has given them enough time to be more prepared the next time they face her, and with luck and the professor's help, they might find a way to stop her once and for all. Then Amara asks what will become of her, wondering if her power is a blessing or a curse, and she wonders if she will become like the New Mutants or Selene. And that's the end of the issue. We are promised in the next issue, questions are answered, decisions are made, and Rio de Janeiro is nearly destroyed when one of the New Mutants comes down with Sunstroke. Sunstroke is the next issue's title. Thoughts upon originally reading. So, I have no memories again with this issue. My memories do become a lot clearer after this point in the series. I think I probably thought this issue was okay, but again, I didn't really like Amara that much, so it wasn't one of my favorites. This is embarrassing to admit because I'm such a super fan of this series, but I think I've only read this issue maybe twice ever before. I know I must have read it when I was younger because I own a physical copy of this issue, I also know I read it once more a few years ago when I was younger, but an adult. I remember a small memory about this arc in general the last time I read it. I remember thinking this wasn't a great arc, and not really the best New Mutants was able to be. I think I enjoyed this arc a lot more during this current reading than I did when I first read it. I wish I had more to say in this section, but there really just isn't much in my memories about this issue. Thoughts upon rereading. So this was an okay issue, I thought. It had a lot of action, but I didn't like it as much as the last one. And honestly, I think it felt pretty rushed, but I'm glad they wrapped up this storyline because I was pretty ready to move on. I'm starting to get really excited because soon what I think are the much superior issues begin. In my opinion, it gets good around New Mutants number 13, but I'm getting ahead of myself. I should stick to talking about this issue. Overall, I thought the pacing was really good. The art was okay. Not the best, but not bad either. I am glad some of my questions from the last issue, like why did no one bring up Danny being missing to Galio, were answered. I'm also glad that Bobby's mom is alive, and I feel bad that she had to find out about that meanie, Emmanuel, from Castro. I'm assuming Bobby just knocked Castro out, so I wonder if Castro's just stuck in Nova Roma forever. I don't think he ever gets mentioned again, so I guess he just lives there now. Or maybe he's executed for helping Galio. I don't know. I did feel bad for Amara in this issue, especially when she was begging for her father to help her and she was so scared and confused. I guess I have pity for her because she is, after all, just a kid. And honestly, Bobby and Amara have terrifying powers to have suddenly manifest. I know all the mutants' powers are probably scary when they are first discovered, 
except maybe my favorite boy Cypher, but we haven't even gotten to him yet. I just wanted to mention him because I'm ready to gush over my Cypher obsession, but it's not time yet. Not yet. But Amara and Bobby turn into another form entirely, and Amara can easily kill people with her magma form. I know Rain also changes forms completely, but people won't die if they touch her. I think it would be really hard considering Amara has seen Celine use her powers for evil means, and of course she must wonder if the same could become of her, becoming evil and out of control. Even Danny, an issue or two back, thinks that no wonder some people hate mutants because of ones like Celine. So Bobby is outright brutal in this issue, especially to Celine. But honestly, I think this was the only way to deal with Celine. What else could they do? Capture her? Let her continue sacrificing innocent people? Leave her to get revenge on Aquila for killing Gallio? I think that Bobby was right in doing what he did, and I tried to imagine myself in the same situation, and I think I might have done the same. Plus, as Bobby points out, she's probably not dead anyways. As X-Men readers from the future, we know that she has a lot more involvement, and she definitely isn't gone. But I do think Bobby was also putting his frustrations into the situations, though. I mean, now, on top of everything else, he knows his dad is terrible and involved with the Hellfire Club. At least his mother ended up being alive, but I never really thought she was dead because I've read this before. I remember what happens in the next issue, and I see that ending this issue with Amara wondering aloud if her powers will be used for good or ill makes sense. I also like Amara's power a lot more in this read-through. I think I can now see these kids as kids because I'm older than them now, and I kind of feel for Amara a lot more for her struggles than I did when I was a kid reading these. I feel like all the characters are kind of like my little babies now. Ex-babies, if you will. <laughs> I also liked that Aquila killed Galio in a match that was seemingly against him. I kind of expected this, though, even the first time I read it. Overall, I found this issue to be a little ho-hum, even though there was a lot happening in it. The action was pretty good, but the story was really winding down, and it was kind of just like tying up all the loose ends. Which wasn't boring, but it didn't really hold many surprises for me. So, there isn't much more to say, I think. Final Rating I gave this a 6 out of 10 as a final rating. I gave it a 2 for art, a 2 for story, a 1 for character development because Bobby finds out his father is evil, and Amara does more with her powers, and Celine is seemingly trapped. I gave it a 1 for how it holds up. Overall, it was fun to read, but honestly not that memorable, really. Just kind of the standard superhero thing. So what did you think? Are you ready to move away from the Nova Roma arc? Because it's pretty much over now. If you haven't guessed, Amara is now going to join the New Mutants, and she journeys out into the modern world in the next issue. And boy, is it a challenge for so many reasons from what I remember. I'm sorry this one didn't have much commentary, but I kind of feel like there wasn't much to say. And I covered most of the things I wanted to say about this arc in the previous two videos. This issue was also run during Marvel's Assistant Editors Month, so they kind of honored the assistant editor with a little comic, and also Len, who was the assistant of Jim Shooter, talks a lot about the bullpen. There is a note on the cover that reads, Warning, surgeons have generally determined that Assistant Editors Month is dangerous to your health. But I cannot find the name of the actual assistant editor, so is it Lynn or the brown guy the comic is about? Maybe they're both assistants. I think they're both assistants. Also, when looking into this, I found out that Sal did not illustrate the cover. It was illustrated by Walter Simonson, Louise Simonson's husband. They have been married since 1980, but Mandrake was still the finisher on the cover. Also, I did want to show you guys some of the original ads that ran in this issue because they are really retro and fun. They were old ads even when I first read the series, so they were always so enjoyable and mysterious to look at. So here are some of the ads I liked. Well, that's it for this one. Please like or subscribe if you liked this video. More videos will be coming soon. I finally got my recording space sorted out and I'm hoping that it will help the workflow of these videos. So I have to do like a lot less audio editing, hopefully. As always, I hope you're having a great day or night. I can't wait until the next issue. I'll see you all the next time. Ashling out!